Welcome back to the Gnome Show, everyone. I'm Josh, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. You would think that I would remember this by now. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror and sci-fi, and really anything else that I think is groovy. <clears throat> I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offering. Content for the Blood God. And now on with the show. I tried doing this once, and I got it once, and then I tried again, and I screwed the entire fucking pooch. Uh, it was uh. awful. <laughs> Tonight, we have The Worm, an animated horror story by Don't Walk Home Alone After Dark. Let me go ahead and give them a like and a subscribe. Make sure you go over and support your creators. Um, make sure uh, also... Um, that um, if you can find it in your heart to watch all the way through, uh, it helps me out um, with um, the watch time. And also, um, a lot of these films are really good. So it behooves you to watch all the way to the end. Uh, like, you know, sometimes... Sometimes you can't get your cat to fucking stop messing with the door. But other times you find really quality gems, and that's really why I do this. Um, also, like, subscribe, share, follow all that stuff for the algorithm. All right. Let's boogie, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. This is the worm. <laughs> Don't ding me for the music. bit bespoke. I like it. Oh, that's not good. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Thank God for phones being like a modern, like, always have a flashlight. If it didn't come out to greet you, why would you ask it hello? The universe's version of jump scares. <laughs> oh, oh, now it's fucking with you. Aren't you not supposed to listen to the voice? Isn't that what they tell you? Never walk out into the fog. That's ominous as fuck. Yeah, I'd squint too. Oh. Oh. No, 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 no. Oh, my lord. Oh. I'm sorry, baby. I think you're fucking cooked. Free me? What? Sparrow Moon was not at all what I thought. Free me, I think. Be. I wasn't given much time to go over her case file before our first appointment. But from what I had read, I half expected some kind of uncontrollable monster to walk through the door. She wasn't anything like that. She was quiet and guarded. Smaller in person than what I had imagined from her photograph. A perfectly normal 17-year-old girl. That made it even harder to believe she was capable of doing the things that she did. She was the last surviving member of the so-called Woodfield Five. A group of kids all from the same remote northern town who suffered a series of unexplained, at times violent, mental breaks. Clinical notes suggested some kind of shared psychosis though unlike anything i'd ever heard of in my 20-year practice all right shared psychosis by all accounts sparrow had an unremarkable childhood this by the way is also a call of cthulhu scenario not literally but yeah. 
Good no indications mm -hmm. of behavioral difficulty, good grades in school, active social life, no family history of mental illness to speak of. Her mother had been part of some offbeat spiritual commune years earlier, but had left that behind when Sparrow was quite young and eventually he married. There was nothing to suggest any kind of underlying trauma or abuse, though as you come to find in my line of work, that's not always so obvious. The only path to understanding what really happened in Oldfield was Sparrow herself. And that would prove more difficult than anyone anticipated. I learned very little over the first weeks of our sessions together. Sparrow was often uncooperative, careful never to allow the growing familiarity between us to weaken her resolve. I was not as strong. I became unreasonably attached to her. Uh -huh. The endless medical diagnostics revealed nothing we didn't already know. She barely slept. The scratches on her arms were self-inflicted. And aside from high blood pressure, she was physically healthy. No one was certain about what exactly was wrong with her. And she was getting worse. Weeks yeah, turned to months, really good. and I was running out of time. The courts had determined that unless I could demonstrate conclusive progress in her treatment, Sparrow would be transferred to an isolated psychiatric ward and out of my care. I could have walked away at that point. I probably should have. But what I wanted, what I've always wanted, was answers. After all that we'd been through, she wasn't a kid to me anymore. That's bad she wasn't news, a buddy. Either. She was a puzzle to solve. Sodium pentothal can be administered to induce something called narcosynthesis, a state between asleep and awake where the subject is highly suggestible. In most places today, the practice is frowned upon. Normally, I would never... I would like to say, ladies and gentlemen, you know where this is going. Uh, blood, violence, gore, warning, trigger warnings, maybe. I don't know. You know where this is going. Or consider such a treatment, but given the circumstances, my options were limited. I knew full well that this could risk professional censure, perhaps even my career itself. No, you wouldn't That die, didn't seem so. to matter at the time. Oh, wait, he is narrating, so maybe he does this. After the injection, Sparrow was brought to my office. We were left alone, and I asked her to count backwards from ten. Though before she even got to five, it was clear she knew something was wrong. Her breathing became shallow and her eyes darted around rapidly. She began talking about a mist coming into the room that only she could see. She could hear a voice from within it calling to her. The drug had disoriented her to such a degree that I don't even think she recognized me. Sparrow's small size and chronic fatigue made the dosage I administered tricky. She drifted in and out for several minutes. When lucid, I redirected her, asking if she could tell me what the voice she heard was saying. After a long pause, she finally whispered, Little bird. At that point, Sparrow was not interested in answering any of my questions. She just spoke, and I listened. She said that it knew. It knew that was what he used to call her. The old man. But the voice wasn't a man's. It was something else. She said it comes with the mist. 
that it takes things from you and it grows, adding to what it's taken from others. It eats you from the inside. She didn't know its name, but called it the worm. As Sparrow lapsed into unconsciousness, I was left with more questions than answers. I arranged to have her return to her room and resign myself to the idea that I might never get the chance to understand the truth. That I had failed. I destroyed the records of our last session to prevent the review board from finding out what I had done. It was over. Or at least... That's what I thought. Oh. <clears throat> it was that night the dream started. Oh. Trippy. Uh. Characters aside, where you know, or like they get trapped somewhere else, or they leave the party for some reason, or if they're drinking. Every time I go to sleep, it's the same. It doesn't really matter how the dream begins. Eventually, the mist will come. And with the mist, always comes the worm. Just like she said it would. Yep. You okay. wanted to know. That never works. It won't let you. The best you can hope for is that you wake up quick before it begins to feed. At first, I told myself that it would go away. It could be a simple anxiety-induced aberration brought on by the stress of dealing with the case. But it was soon obvious that wasn't it. The, Nancy, Mr. the nightmares didn't stop. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't okay. eat. <laughs> it wasn't long before my colleagues began to take notice. The T-Rex vision is strong. <laughs> Things got so bad I had no other choice. I called in every favor, pulled every string I could, and arranged access to Sparrow at her current facility. I needed answers more than ever. And she still had them. Oh, it's almost over. 
I almost didn't recognize her at first. She looked strong and alert. A stark contrast to the tired girl that I had spent all that time with. I didn't have to ask any questions this time. Just by looking at me, she knew all too well what was happening. We sat down, and Sparrow Moon gave me what I needed. The worm is some kind of parasite. A pathogen, an ancient thing passed from host to host, manifesting in their dreams, feeding on their deepest fears. It will not stop. Always hungry for more. It won't kill you. It doesn't want you dead. It wants what any good virus wants. To propagate. To be passed on. To be fed. Sparrow tried to hold it inside of her. To protect others. She thought that if she could fight it long enough, it would die with her. She passed the worm to me the same way that it had been passed to her. Just by telling me about it. You have to believe me. I am sorry for this. Oh, shit. Now that I've told nice. you, I don't know when. But sooner or later in your dreams, the mist will come. And with the mist, always comes the worm. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really good. Um, I'm a big Call of Cthulhu, Cthulhu fan. And uh, this wasn't even Cthulhu. Well, it wasn't him specific. <laughs> but there is a number of entities that could probably fit the bill. Um, but it very much felt like a uh, scenario of Call of Cthulhu. Um, if you've uh, reached the end, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, it helps with the, um, with the viewing numbers. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you go on over to the Don't Walk home alone after dark channel and uh see what else they have um they do have uh, a couple of other things that i'm gonna have to check out like the pine creepers and um uh, yeah there's another one but that's that's the other one but uh there are a couple of shorts too that i have to look at later um but yeah <clears throat> Thank you for uh, coming along on the ride. Be safe, be happy, be healthy. Uh, from me and Andy, uh, we love you all. And we'll see you in the next one.